Did you try trading crypto but lost money? Would you like to know when to buy and sell in the crypto market? Looking for the next 50 times or 100 times crypto investment? Would you like to receive winning crypto trading signals instantly? Do you want to network with other winning traders? Join the Crypto Millionaire Fastlane VIP trading group today. Go to CryptoMillion.co to join now. Welcome to CryptoMillion.co. We have the home of the Crypto uh, Millionaire Fastlane VIP Trading Group. Excited to bring this video to you guys. Today's video is about Bitcoin hitting the all-time high. Three years later, Bitcoin has now hit the all-time high and there's no more talk of a bubble. This is a New York Times article. This is going to go down in history, so I wanted to make this video because this date, November 30th, 2020, is the day when Bitcoin hits its new record. This time, when let's talk about the Bitcoin's price passed $19,783, $19,783. Bitcoin just hit a new all-time high. Um, after in March, Bitcoin fell below $4,000 in March. Now it's just past $19,783. More investors are now buying Bitcoin for the long term. I think this is a turning point because as you look at this chart, you see Bitcoin go all the way up in 2017. Three years later, I mean, a couple of months later, it went all the way down to like 3000 Three years later, we're back at that 20000 mark. And it shows that Bitcoin is not a bubble. Bitcoin is here to stay. And I think um, this New York Times article is confirming that mainstream media is now confirming that Bitcoin is not a bubble. It's here to stay. So let's get into this article really quickly. This is by Nanyo Popper. He wrote this article November 30th, 2020 at 10.15 a.m. Bitcoin is back again. Nearly three years after it went on a hair-bending rise and hit a peak of $19,783. The price of a single Bitcoin rose above that for the first time on Monday, according to the data and news provider Coindesk. The cryptocurrency has soared since March after sinking below 4000 at the outset of the coronavirus pandemic. Bitcoin's latest climb is different from its last spike in 2017, which was driven largely by investors in Asia who had just learned about cryptocurrencies. Back then, the digital token soon lost momentum as people questioned what it could do other than allow for easy online speculating and drug and ransom payments. While those questions remain, Bitcoin is now being fueled by a less speculative fever. Buyers led by American investors, including companies and other traditional investors, are treating Bitcoin as an alternative asset, somewhat like gold, according to analysis from the data firm Chain Analysis. Rather than quickly trading in and out of it, more investors are using Bitcoin as a place to park part of their investment portfolios outside the influence of governments and the traditional financial system, Chain Analysis and other industry firms said. As a very different set of people who are buying Bitcoin recently said, Philip. Gradwell, the chief economist at Chain Analysis, which analyzes the movement of cryptocurrencies, they are doing it in steadier amounts over sustained periods of time, and they are taking it off exchanges and holding it as an investment. So I'm going to read that again. So what these institutional investors are doing, they are doing it in a steadier amount over sustained periods of time, and they are and taking it off exchanges and holding it as an investment. The excitement has been underpinned by regulators and mainstream financial companies that are trying to make cryptocurrency safer and more accessible. The Office of Comptroller of the Currency and American Regulators said this summer that banks would be allowed to hold cryptocurrencies for customers. That's a big rule. Banks will now be allowed to hold cryptocurrencies for customers. And PayPal announced last month that it will follow its rival Square and allow people to buy and hold Bitcoin and a few other cryptocurrencies. Our move came as a result of the conversations with government officials and then seeing the dramatic shift in digital payments as a result of the pandemic. Dan Schulman, the chief executive of PayPal, said in an interview, more than a million people, three to four times what the company expected, joining waitlist to use cryptocurrencies before the future was started, he said. Bitcoin's rise is part of a broader exuberance in cryptocurrencies and stock markets which are defying the gloom of the pandemic-induced recession. The Dow, the S&P 500, and Nasdaq have hit record highs this month, with Wall Street bullied by the presidential election and the news of potential coronavirus vaccines. Bitcoin is a digital currency with software and rules that were released in early 2019, 2009 by a shadowy with the um, pseudonym Satoshi Nakanomo. 
The computer code established that the total supply of Bitcoin would be limited. Only 21 million tokens would ever be created, distributed, and sold on blocks each day through a process known as mining to some of the computers that maintain the currently online infrastructure. Like gold, Bitcoin can be created, moved, and stored outside the purview of any government or financial institution. Bitcoin exists on a financial ledger known as a blockchain, which is maintained and updated by a volunteer network of people running thousands of computers worldwide, a system meant to ensure that no one can... No one computer or institution can change the rules or control the network. The open nature of the system and the fact that anyone can join it and create a wallet without providing so much as a name or a phone number has made it popular for those who want to circumvent the traditional financial system. They have included terrorists, drug dealers in countries like North Korea, Venezuela, and Iran that want to evade American financial sanctions. This technology already plays a role in many of the most significant criminal and national security threats our nation faces, the Department of Justice said in a report last month. The report describes how deeply Bitcoin has been woven into the infrastructure of the criminal world. But Bitcoin's stateless nature has also won over investors interested in legitimate uses of the technology, some who have been motivated by libertarian distrust of government. Others who are less ideology have gravitated to Bitcoin as an alternative to the financial system. Still, Bitcoin is not backed by anything other than its computer network and the faith of the people who buy it and give it value on exchanges. Many of these people are betting that someone else will be willing to pay them more for their Bitcoin in the future. This has made Bitcoin's prices volatile. It has felt to its most recent low in March when fear of the pandemic hit global markets. Soon after, though, investors began talking about Bitcoin as the beneficiary of the global downturn. Downturn. In May, Paul Tudor Jones, one of Wall Street's best-known hedge fund managers, said that he had put almost 2% of his portfolio in Bitcoin. He said that the cap on Bitcoin's production made an attractive alternative to the declining value of traditional currencies, which he thought was inevitable as central banks printed more money to encourage an economic recovery. Every day goes by that Bitcoin survives, the trust in it will go up, Mr. Jones told CNBC at the time. He did not respond to a request for comment for this article. Some public companies also dived into Bitcoin because of concerns about the value of the dollar. In August, MicroStrategy, a software company in Virginia, said it bought $250 million of Bitcoin to store some of, the, some of the cash it had in the corporate treasury. Michael Saylor, MicroStrategy's chief executive, said in an interview that after knowing almost nothing about Bitcoin at the beginning of this year, he had become a believer in how the hard-coded limit on the number of tokens would help hold its value over time. He became so enthusiastic that he put $175 million of his own money into the cryptocurrency. MicroStrategy later bought another $175 million of Bitcoin. For anything that anybody has invested in as a store of value, it starts to look like it's better to move that into Bitcoin, Mr. Sager said. In October, Square said it was putting $50 million of its corporate cash into Bitcoin. In 2018, Square also been offering the digital currency on the Cash App, its phone app that people begin to use to send money between friends and family. This month, the company, which is led by Jack Dorsey, which is also the chief executive of Twitter, says customers held $1.8 billion of Bitcoin, up 180% from a year ago. Last month, analysts at JP Morgan wrote a widely circulated note about how using Bitcoin as an alternative to gold, especially by younger, younger investors, was creating a significant market for the tokens. Given that the total value of all outstanding Bitcoin around $350 billion was a small fraction of all the gold in the world, the analysts said they could see the value of Bitcoin going much higher. Bitcoin's rally has been accompanied by a broader bull market in cryptocurrencies just since 2017, while much of the fervor three years ago centered on new coins from scammy so-called initial coin offerings. Interest has shifted to coins trying to take part in what is known as decentralized finance or DeFi. These systems, which remain buggy and unproven, aim to make it possible to take out loans and insurance and collect entrance without involving any financial institutions. Central banks from countries such as Singapore, Sweden, and Bahamas are also looking at creating national digital currencies inspired partly by Bitcoin. The biggest project from China's central bank appears to be the furthest along. The national coins which will leave behind the volatility of Bitcoin could make cryptocurrencies obsolete, but they could also make it easier to move in and out of digital currencies of all kinds. Given this uncertainty around Bitcoin's value, any excitement is likely to be followed by another contraction. But the number of crashes Bitcoin has survived is changing the conversation around the technology. Now it's LeBron James playing at age 21 and starting to dominate the court, Mr. Stater said. It's not LeBron James age 13 throwing a temper tantrum. Temp temper tantrum. You've gotten a hardening and a maturing of an asset. Bitcoin has been around for 11 years and it has not died yet. Right. So the death of Bitcoin is... Um, overstated. Bitcoin is alive and well. So if you go to Bitcoin.org, you can get all of the information that you need because it's an innovative payment network and a new kind of money. Did you try trading crypto but lost money? Would you like to know when to buy and sell in the crypto market? Looking for the next 50 times or 100 times crypto investment? Would you like to receive winning crypto trading signals instantly? Do you want to network with other winning traders? 
Join the Crypto Millionaire Fastlane VIP Trading Group today. Go to CryptoMillion.co to join now.